reserve na kayo ng room doon, yung usual room ko doon sa Casa Rosso. Welcome back, MPC. Let's now have Presidential Spokesperson Harry Roque. Good morning, uh, Philippines, at uh, good morning to the ladies and gentlemen of the Malacanang Press Corps. Yesterday, we had our regular cabinet meeting, and there were three items on the agenda, first of which was report of the Interagency Committee on Boracay, particularly the carrying capacity assessment of Boracay Island. Then there was... Um, a joint statement of the Cabinet Economic um, Development Cluster on 2018 August inflation and measures to address food inflation. And the last agenda was um, the direct flights from uh, Manila to Tel Aviv. Now, just to read for you the conclusions made by the interagency um, on the carrying capacity assessment of Boracay Island, um, there is an excess in existing population and tourists in the island. There's an excess in existing hotels and available rooms. And there's excess in solid waste generated. There is sufficient water supply. There is, however, insufficient wastewater treatment facilities. Some of the recommendations which were adopted uh, yesterday include maintain the tourism carrying capacity of 19,215 pesos persons per day, 6,405 tourist arrivals per day. Evaluate the feasibility of utilizing the extra available rooms. Promote wetlands utilization for filtering out waste from both soil and water through plant uptake. Um, maximize open spaces for vegetation. Minimize point source pollution. Um, IEC, especially on both solid waste and liquid waste management. Um, minimize coastal erosion and um, establish permanent monitoring facilities in designated areas. So the most important is that they assess that the carrying capacity for Boracay is 19,215 persons per day, including 6,405 tourist arrivals per day. Now, as far as the report of the economic cluster is concerned, they actually did not make a presentation in the cabinet itself. They, however, distributed a document, and they had an earlier briefing for the president on their joint statement on August 2018 inflation and measures to address food inflation. They emphasized that the 6.4 inflation is only for the month of August. However, the average for the year has been at 4.8. So 6.4 is only for the month of August. And they trace basically the inflation, um, the top 10 contributors to inflation as being, well, the heaviest is rentals for housing, rice, electricity, gas, and other fuels. Um, those are the heaviest, no? Um, including fish and seafood. But in terms of ranking, the highest is actual rentals for housing at 12.88, that's the weight, rice at 9.59, um, catering services at 8.05, electricity, gas, and other fuels at 7.4. Um, Year-to-date total, they have also a year-to-date total right now. It's 4.8. So we stand by the correct figure of inflation year-to-date as being 4.8. Now, the highest, actually, um, of the different uh, sectors the, whose prices in increase is tobacco. The highest increase was re registered for tobacco. And year-to-date, the increase is 25.9. And that's why we underscore that this is not bad, because we're trying to discourage people from smoking tobacco. The next highest is 19.1, operation of personal transport equipment at 19.1. And then fish and seafood at 11.9. And then vegetables at 8.6, non-alcoholic -alcohol beverages at 8.3. And then electricity, gas, and other fuels at 6.7%. Now, what are the proposed 
anti-inflationary measures? Well, they broke it down into short-term, immediate to short-term. First, we assure the public that we have sufficient rice. We have 4.6 million sacks of rice available in NFA warehouses, which will be released immediately. We have around 2 million sacks of rice which will arrive before the end of September. And the NFA Council has likewise approved the importation of 5 million sacks that will arrive over the next 1.5 months. Now, 2.7 million sacks will be allocated to Zabsulta, Zamwanga, Basilan, Sulu, and Tawi-Tawi. We are also projecting a harvest for 2018 amounting to 12.6 million metric ton or around 252 million sacks of rice. Now, another 5 million sacks of rice will be imported early next year. Now, another solution, aside from importation, is to simplify and streamline the licensing procedures for rice imports of the NFA. They will form monitoring teams for surveillance of rice from ports to NFA warehouses and outlets. Urge the Senate to immediately pass the rice tarification bill within the month. On fish, allow imports to be distributed in Metro Manila and other markets in the country. On chicken, set up public markets where producers can sell directly to the end customer as well as provide cold storage facility for this purpose, and I believe the DTI discussed this earlier. On sugar, simplify procedures to allow importation to direct users to moderate costs to consumers. On vegetables, improve logistics, transport distribution, and storage would reduce prices to consumers. Kaugnay nito, sinabi po ni Presidente sa kanyang ugnayan kahapon ki Secretary Salponelo, gusto niya wala ng pipigil doon sa mga nagde-deliver ng mga um, um, gulay no? galing sa Norte papuntang Metro Manila. Prioritize the release of essential food items in the port. Ito po yung sinasabi natin na dapat magkakaroon ng designated person na on duty all the time para lumagda ng mga papeles, lalong-lalo na sa pag-angkat ng bigas dyan sa customs. Ang mga medium to long term measures na sinuggest nila para sa agrikultura po, um, facilitate better access to farming technologies, promote research and development to develop resilient and high yielding varieties of rice, promote utilization of high yielding variety of crops, reassess the country's planting season and crop viability in each region, and LGUs to aggressively impose the idle land tax. Sa fishery sector, i-review at possibly amend the fisheries code and other policies governing the sector. Sa legislation, introduce tarification for sugar, fish, meat, and vegetables. Now, so far po, sa comparative inflation rate, ang uh, pinakamataas pong inflation ang pinaka, uh, was experienced during the time of President Cory Aquino, followed by Fidel Ramos, Joseph Estada, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. Now, during the time of President Aquino, ang low inflation rate was 2.8, ang high was 5.2. And during the time of President Duterte so far, it's from 3.2 to a high of 6.4. Okay? So, the Economic Cluster Group will submit to the Office of the President a draft executive order removing administrative constraints and non-tariff barriers on importation of fish, rice, sugar, meat, and vegetables. Ibig sabihin, gagawin nilang mas simple po yung proseso ng pag-aangkat ng pagkain. Now, on other matters, well, ang Typhoon Manghut or Ompong po, binibigyan po natin ng paalala ang publiko na maging alerto at ligtas sa paparating na bagyo. Ayon sa pag-asa, inaasahan na papasok ang bagyong Manghut sa area of Philippine Responsibility ngayong hapon at uh, pangangalan ng Ompong. Batay din po sa latest update ng National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council ay uh, may naihanda ng standby funds, food passes at iba pang relief assistance ng Department of Social Welfare and Development. Nakipag-unayan na po ang gobyerno sa mga ahensyang may kinilaman sa disaster preparedness para sa kanila mabilis na pagtugon sa mga maari maapektuhan ng bagyong ompong. As, as I speak, there is an ongoing pre-disaster risk assessment meeting now to ensure the orchestrated response of the government to Typhoon Manghut. Ngayon pa lamang po ay hinihikayat na po natin ang mga kababayan na umantabay sa mga ulat, balita, abiso at anunsyo mula sa mga istasyon ng gobyerno maging sa social media accounts ng mga ahensya ng pamahalaan. Alamin ang evacuation plan sa inyong lugar. 
Huwag rin po natin kalimutang maghanda ng flashlight at radyo na may ba bagong baterya, sapat na pagkain, may inom na tubig, gas, baterya at first aid supplies. Iwasan rin po natin ang mga mabababang lugar, pampang, bangin at paanan ng mga burol at bundok. Sa ating mga babayan po na wala namang gagawin sa labas ay mangyari man at least lamang po sa kanilang mga bahay at huwag gumala para sa inyong kaligtasan. Ipala Ipanalangin po natin ang kaligtasan ng lahat. Good news, the Philippines went three notches higher from its 2016 ranking landing at 10th spot out of 20 economies for long-term trade sustainability. According to the 2018 Hinrich Foundation Sustainable Trade Index created by the Econom Economist Intelligence Unit, the Philippines outperformed its neighboring countries, Ma Malaysia and Thailand, in overall scores. The index score was measured based on the following pillars, economic growth, social capital, and environmental protection. We're also pleased to announce that the Philippines continues to sustain investor confidence through strong microeconomic fundamentals and growth prospects. According to the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, the country's foreign direct investments net inflows posted a 42.4 growth for the first half of 2018, with a cumulative amount of 5.8 billion US dollars compared to the same period last year. Likewise, an increase of 9.2% was also noted with 831 US million dollars for the month of June 2018 compared to US 765 million in the previous year of the same month. Questions, please. Tina Panganiban Perez. Hi, Tina. Welcome. Are you here long term or just visiting? Just for today, sir. Mm -mm. I miss you. I miss also you in the house. <laughs> Tell them I miss all of them. I'm not there anymore, sir. Ah, wala ka na? San ka na? GA. A general assignment. Yes, okay. sir. Sir, I'm, I'd like to know your reaction to the resolution filed by Senator Trillanes to investigate possible conflict of interest of um, relatives of government officials who may have contracts with government. Well, that's a resolution that should be acted upon by the Senate. We cannot interfere with it because the Senate has plenary powers to conduct its own Senate investigations. But uh, initially, based on the reports that came out so far, do you think there's a conflict of interest? Especially SAP Bongo was, um, was mentioned in the resolution, sir. I'm not aware of any um, conflict of interest on the part of anyone, and I'm sure SAP Bongo can very well defend himself. Sir, last na po. Um, on the statement of the president, um, seemingly daring the military to oust him, but uh, he instigate <laughs> an ano bang purpose ni presidente dun sa pagsasalita niya ng. Yeah. Ang context po kasi ni presidente, sabi niya kung gusto niyo talagang uh, magalsa, magalsa na kayo ng matapos na. Ibig sabihin, kampanti po ang presidente na wala namang suporta na manggagaling sa hanay ng militar para patalsikin siya sa puesto. So yung kanyang seeming incitement is actually also an expression of confidence na wala naman susunod po kay Senator Trillanes at sa kanyang mga kasama. Follow up? Pia. Sir, yesterday President Duterte was talking about a September 21 plot to assassinate him. Ano po ba yung information na hawak niya? Hindi ko po alam kung assassination yun. No? Alam, ang narinig ko lang po is yung sabwatan sa panig ng komunista, ng mga Magdalo at ng mga Dilawad, no? At uh, ang sabi po niya, this is based on intel. No? So we leave it at that because I was not privy to the intel that the president received. So you don't know, sir, where he got the intel info? He did say it from a foreign government. Mm -hmm. um, meron po ba tayong indication kung sino tong bansa na ito, sir? None. Because I'm not privy to that intel. Mm -hmm. Sir, is this, is this a regular thing for a country to spy on the government's perceived enemies? I do not know if um, it is a regular thing. What I do know is that's the nature of Intel. Um, Intel precisely is intended to provide you information to avoid eventualities. Thank you, sir. Nestor? Sir, why is the president uh, yesterday parang suddenly uh, challenging the military to stage uh, mutiny against him if they are no longer happy with his leadership? Does, it, does this not mean that um, he is challenging the loyalty of the AFP because during his arrival speech last week and he mentioned that there was no need for a loyalty check among the military and the police? As I said, I think the proper context is chinalens niya dahil sigurado naman siya na walang suporta. 
So, pero sinasabi niya, ako hindi kapit ko kung gusto niyo, gawin niyo. But I think the President, by saying so, remains confident na uh, walang banta sa kanyang administrasyon at wala namang sasama sa mga komunista at saka dun sa mga nagbabalak na patalsikin siya. Inaando lang. Hi, sir. Sir, dun po sa Intel, the President said that um, he wants this declassified. How soon will this be released? Because he said any day now. We'll just have to wait. Mm. Sir, but it would seem that the President is aware of uh, kung saan nga tong galing, as he mentioned, and he's okay with this. Isn't this interference? No. Oh, you know, even as early as um, the time when we develop interstate relations, no, the gathering of intel has always been recognized as a function of diplomatic missions. No? We have regular reports from our own embassies. We all also get intel information. That's the nature of diplomatic relations nowadays. Okay. So just to be clear, the president does not see anything wrong with foreign, with other countries listening to conversations of people here in the Philippines? Well, we have um, been beneficiaries of shared information from the United States about um, terrorist groups. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. And he does not intend to call them out for listening in to conversations here. I mean, what also makes you uh, sure that, I mean, are you not worried that they may also be listening to government officials? I'm sure everyone is listening to everyone else. And that is why the rule now is don't use your telephone. Mm -hmm. And this is not uh, something for ordinary people to be worried about. Well, you know, this, at this time and age, you need to know that oftentimes uh, privacy of communication is seriously challenged, um, not just by Intel uh, individuals, but because of the nature of the technology. No? So take extraordinary precautions in uh, uh, protecting the privacy of your communication. Thank you, sir. In, uh, Tina? Okay. Uh, Christine? Sir, yesterday the president said uh, parang, uh, another legal basis for um, voiding the amnesty of Senator Tillianis is that um, it was Gasmin who, former Secretary Gasmin, who signed the amnesty. But this was not contained in the in Proclamation 572. Will there be an, aden, uh, an addendum, if ever, to the proclamation? No need, because now the case is before the Makati courts. The Makati courts will address all issues that may be brought before it. Um, although we have filed a motion, I'm sure the court will require further uh, fi find, uh, filings on the part of the government and on the part of Senator Triales that can be ventilated in the court. So even if it's not included in the yes, proclamation? Yes, because the only thing pending is a motion for issuance of arrest warrant. And of course, in the course of resolving this motion, all arguments will have to be ventilated before the courts. So it doesn't mean that the proclamation is deficient? Well, the president and the, the president has said that the proclamation, which proclamation are we talking about? 572. No, it's not deficient. Because we're not limited on the grounds mentioned under 572. No? Mm -hmm. um, the rulings that the, pres that the Presidential Legal Council read and the ruling that I read before you yesterday mm -hmm. indicate that under the Constitution, no, there are certain powers that the president cannot delegate to anyone else and must do himself. So that's the Constitution speaking. Well, one of the arguments parang yesterday I, I, from Valte Yata is that um, yung amnesty daw is for a class. And so parang you need to screen yung the individuals kaya hindi kailangan agad na isign. Even if it is a class, uh -oh. you need individual names who will be beneficiaries of the amnesty to be able to avail of it. So without the names being listed and the amnesty proclaimed by the president, the position of the palace is that it is not sufficient if it is signed by any other person other than the president. So will, will the others who were also given amnesty be affected by, by, by this? They could potentially be affected, but I do not know if the government will question the others similarly situated. So you, ang kinakwestiyon lang talaga is yung kay, the case of For Senator now, Trillanes. the only one pending in court is for the court to issue a warrant of arrest against Senator Trillanes. So it will not affect the all, I mean, because it's still the same proclamation that's being questioned. Without 72. prejudice, of course, to the government, if it wants to, no? But that's the call of the government. 
So right now, it's not questioning yung the others. Right now, the only pending motion is to cancel, well, to issue alias warrant of arrest against Senator Antonio Trillanes. Okay, Vance Fernandez. Microphone, please. Microphone. Anyway, hindi naman po pwede yun na we grant amnesty to a class and you don't specify who. If you're going to be a beneficiary of um, um, benevolence of the state, you have to specify who will benefit. Still, what, would, what is the difference? Hindi naman isang million yan. They could have specified the names and the president could have granted amnesty specifically, even if not personally, then to the group of individuals named. The committee has no power. That's the jurisprudence. Christine, use the microphone, yes, but please. You are the ones who screen you. Yes, but the point of the president and the wording of the jurisprudence is it must be literally the president to grant them amnesty. I gave you the citation yesterday of the case that I read before you. I can give it to you again. You can check the wordings of the rulings yourselves. Vance Fernandez. Yes, sir. Trillanes is calling on the investigation of Bongo dahil sa pagpasok nito sa mga kontrata ng kanyang pamilya. So, will Mal Malacanang call on the investigation on Trillanes dahil sa lifestyle niya at ang pagpasok ng kanyang uh, mother sa ilang kontrata? Well, gaya ng sinabi ko po kanina, gawin na po ng uh, Senado ang kanilang katungkulan. Si Secretary Bongo naman po can very well defend himself. So does it warrant an investigation? Nasa Senado po yan. Hindi namin pinaghihimasukan ng Senado. So anong basihan kay Pangulong uh, kay Bongo regarding dito sa binibintang? Nako, si Have... Senator Trillanes po ang dapat sumagot niyan. Hindi okay. po kami. Thank you. Okay, question ng PC. Um, Rose Novenaria. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Sir, kailan po ilalabas ni Presidente yung executive order na magpapatupad ng mga hakbang ng gobyerno laban po sa inflation? Well, lilinawin ko po, yung EO has to do with yung non-tariff barriers at saka yung uh, non-tariff impediments. No? Pero yung mga ibang hakbang po ginagawa na natin, yung pagpapapasok ng mga inaangkat na pagkain, yung uh, um, pagtatanggal ng ilang mga restrictions sa importation, nagagawa na po yan. Pero specific po yung EO dun sa mga non-tariff barrier measures. So hindi na po natin naantayin yan dahil karamihan po ng mga recommendation are already being implemented. Ay, another question, sir. Sir, ano yung nakitang dahilan ni Presidente para tanggapin yung resignation ni Jason Aquino as NFA Administrator? Hindi na po siguro um, pinag-isipan pa ni Presidente yon dahil kung ayaw naman niya manungkulan dahil hindi niya kaya, yun naman ang dahilan na sinabi ni Presidente, hahanap ng uh, kapalit na kakayanin. Sir, uh, mananagot kaya siya dun sa nangyaring rice shortage sa uh, ibang lugar sa Pilipinas, sir? Well, it's without prejudice kung merong uh, basihan para sa pananagutan pero sa ngayon po, abalang Presidente na naghahanap ng kapalit ni Jason Aquino. Thank you. Okay, Rosalie, then Ina and Chona. Uh, Christine, pabot ng microphone. Thank you. Sir, kanina nabanggit din po ng DTI na wala tayong problema sa supply ng bigas, pero may problema tayo sa distribution ng supply. So ano po yung marching order ng Pangulo ngayong wala na pong pinuno ang NFA para mapabilis yung pag-distribute ng supply ng bigas? Well, I think ang DTI mismo may mga plano. Sila na magsiset up ng mga rolling stores, sila na magsiset up ng mga public markets no, para madala na kaagad ang uh, supply diretso na sa ma mga mamimili, hindi na dadaan sa traders. No? Isa lang po yan sa pamamaraan na um, i-implement natin para masigurado nga yung distribution. Pero ang tingin ko dyan, kaya kinakailangan ng isang absolutely honest NFA administrator, um, kinakailangan talaga na yung inaangkat na bigas ay eh, makarating dun sa intended beneficiaries. Lalong-lalo na yung intended para maging NFA rice, dapat maibenta talaga yan at 27 na dapat makarating sa mga merkado. So sir, kahapon kasi nabanggit ni Pangulo na kaya po napapagod na si uh, admin Jason Aquino dahil hindi siya makakope up dun sa kalakaran sa loob ng ahensya. So paano i-address ng Pangulo yung problema na yon since yun po yung dahilan kung bakit nagkakaroon din ng problema sa distribution ng supply ng bigas? Kinakalam din siguro po isang leader na kakayanin yung kalakaran at babaguhin ang kalakaran dyan sa NFA. Okay, Chona? 
Sir, clarify ko lang yung sinabi ka kahapon ni Presidente nung tinanong siya ni Secretary Panelo na uh, re- kumusta yung relasyon natin sa China. The President said, kaya nag-away kami. We had a little bit of hindi naman animosity. Is the President referring to presidency na nag-away kami? Hindi naman nag-away. Kung hindi, uminit ang ulo niya siguro. It's a better expression. No? Mm-hmm. Uminit ang ulo niya doon sa nabalita na warning na ibinigay doon sa mga piloto natin na lumilipad sa Um, isla na pinag-aari natin. No? So, uminit lang ang ulo, nagkainitan, kumbaga. So, how's the relationship now between the Ay, Pareho pa rin po. Uh, ang hindi pwedeng mapagkasunduan, isinesang tabi, ang po pwedeng isulong, isinusulong. Wala pong pagbabago sa ating polisiya. Ang susunod na hakbang na nga ay yung pagpirma ng uh, kasunduan sa panig ng dalawang bansa pagdating dun sa joint exploration. Na importante naman, no? dahil alam natin na ang ating problema talaga kakulungan ng krudo at langis na kapag tumaas ang presyo nito sa merkado, lahat tumataas. So, importante talaga na ituloy na natin itong exploration nito nang tayo po ay magkaroon ng energy security. Okay, last two, Ina, then Pia. Sir, maikli lang to. Just a categorical um, answer, sir. Ano ang status ngayon ng Proclamation 572 as far as Malacanang is concerned? It's valid. There is no impediment for its implementation. Um, and therefore, we believe that the um, amnesty granted to Trillanes, Senator Trillanes, is null and void ab initio. Okay. And it's uh, concerning yung sa Makati Court, um, yung arrest issue. What are What's going to happen now? The president, now is a, the president is a prosecutor. He knows that the arrest will have to be pursuant to a warrant to be issued mm-hmm. by the court. So we are awaiting the um, issuance of the RTC, if any, no, of a warrant of arrest against uh, Senator Trillanes. Inevitably, it is the court that will rule on the validity of Proclamation 572 because if it issues a uh, warrant of arrest, it is ruling that 572 is valid. If it refuses, then it is ruling that 572 is invalid. However, this is a complete win for the government because the Supreme Court, by referring it to the RTC, recognizes that the RTC retains jurisdiction to hear and try the cases against um, Senator Trillanes for coup d'etat. Thank you. So that, I think, is a fundamental victory for the state. On Trillanes, Nestor? Secretary, so is the government now acknowledging that Senator Trillanes applied for amnesty since you mentioned that um, it's now, since the government is now saying that it was approved by former Defense Secretary Voltaire Gasmin? No, it has never been disputed that he was granted amnesty. The issue is it's void ab initio because he did not comply with the requirements. Still on Tina? But I guess uh, sa proclamation it was mentioned that 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 the there was a question on the application of Trillanes for amnesty. Yes, it, we are questioning that, and alam mo lahat itong mga usapin nito could easily stop if Senator Trillanes can show his duly received application form, because we can't find a copy in the DND. Secondary document is his own application duly received. Kung ano-ano po pinapakita niya, pati yung sample ng application sa Supreme Court na blanco naman. No? Best evidence rule. Tapos pong usapan kung mailalabas niya ang duly received application form niya. Okay, last four. Rose, Pia, Ay, sir, then... Dun, dun ulit po sa Proclamation 572. So yung phrase po dun sa proclamation na inuutusan ni Presidente na aresto, inuutusan ng Presidente ang polis at militar na arestuhin si Trillanes ay hindi pa muna ipatutupad. Kahit well, po valid pala yung proclamation. Well, uh, po pwede po kung gugustuhin. Pero nag nga po ang presidente na bagamat po pwede siyang mapa-aresto dahil yung court martial proceedings was never terminated. Ha? Even after the grant of amnesty and that that court martial tribunal continues to have jurisdiction over Trillanes as a fiscal. He himself asserted, let's wait for the regional trial court to rule on that matter. Sumulod so, naman po mm-hmm. ang hukbong sandatahan and hence the statement of the Chief of Staff that they will await action from the RTC. So Even hindi, if, because they, they can, there's a pending um, court martial proceedings, the military can arrest him. So, hihintayin muna ng AFP yung magiging desisyon ng korte bago po mag-proceed dun sa court martial proceedings? Yan po ang uh, pag-uutos ng Presidente mismo. Thank you, sir. Uh, Andre Llanes, uh, 
Henry. Secretary, walang utos ang Pangulo sa militar na arestuhin na si Senator Trillanes dahil binabanggit po ninyo wala naman ng legal impediments para ipatupad yung Proclamation 572. Alam niyo pagpapatupad, hindi lang pag-aaresto. It's the conclusion that the amnesty is null and void. So wala na po talagang legal impediment. Kaya lang merong such a thing as respect for the courts dahil tayo naman ay dumulong sa hukuman. So, uh, dumulog <laughs> Tayo naman ay dumulog sa hukuman So respeto na rin yun Ba't tayo dudulog kung hindi naman natin naantay na aksyon ng korte Dahil tayo naman, unlike Trillanes who went to the Supreme Court Ang pinunta ng mga piskal natin, dumulog tayo doon sa RTC So respeto rin yan And as a former prosecutor, the President knows Na since pumunta ka doon, respetuhin mo yung proseso Antayin mo yung desisyon sa iyong motion Paano kung hindi mag-issue ng uh, warrant of arrest ang Makati RTC, alin ang mananaig? Yung uh, Proclamation 572, ipapa-arresto pa rin ba si Trillanes? We will explore all options dahil hindi naman final ruling ang mangyayari dyan kung hindi tayo sasangayon. No? So we will uh, explore options. But what is clear is if the, if the warrant of arrest is issued, we will arrest. Um, certainly, that's the obligation of the executive to implement judicial orders of arrest. Will you advise Senator Trillanes to go home now? Drama lang po yan pag i-stay sa Senado. OA po yan. Uwi na kayo dahil hindi naman tama po na taong bayan na nagbabayad ng inyong board and lodging dyan sa Senado. Yung mga... Panging presidente lang po ang merong libreng board and lodging and I think the vice president in their budget. No? Hindi naman po kasama mga senador. Yung mga supporter niya na gustong umakit sa opisina niya, magsagawa pa ng misa at uh, magbigay ng malalim na suporta sa senador, ano ang inyong gustong iparating sa kanila roon? Pahala po sila sa gusto nilang gawin pero wala pong dahilan para gawin yan. Uh, dahil malinaw naman po na ang presidente na mismo nagsabi, aantayin ng desisyon ng uh, RTC, ang Korte Suprema, binigyan ng uh, uh, paniniwala yung sinabi ng Korte Supreme ng presidente na aantayin ang uh, desisyon ng RTC so wala pong kadahidahilan other than political mileage yang pananatili sa Senado all right thank you sir okay last two pia then bernadette Sir, can it, I get your reaction? According to um, constitutional law professor Tony Lavinia, he said that allowing another country to spy on, pre, uh, on the critics of President Duterte is a culpable violation daw of the Constitution. It's a betrayal of public trust and an, imp and an impeachable offense. That's his personal opinion. I taught at the same law school. I do not recall that we were teaching the same subject of constitutional law. He may have taught it after or before we were together in the College of Law, but that's his personal opinion. And of course, ultimately, whether or not it's impeachable is, will be a decision of the House of Representatives. Because he's saying that itong collaborating with foreigners to attack your fellow Filipinos, parang betrayal of public trust, especially if you're the President of the Philippines, parang kinokompromise mo yung security ng country, working with a foreigner. As I said, the decision whether or not it's impeachable will be a decision of the House of Representatives. I was similarly situated, kaya nga po ako tumakbo ko sa Kongreso at nanalo. Kasi parang as, a, as an academic... Kahit ano sabihin mo, wala naman sa isa yan kapag ang magde-decision, kongreso. No? So, that's just an expression of a personal opinion which should not carry much weight. Sir, on another topic, kasi prior to President Duterte's talk to the nation yesterday, had, there have been many speculations na baka may malaki siyang i-announce and it turns out na wala naman. Parang, what do you think, uh, what was the reason behind this, sir, that he wanted to talk to the nation and also what, what do you think that this achieved? At the end well, of the I day. think the motivation is obvious. Napunta ang lahat ng media mileage kay Senator Trillanes dahil nandun po kami nagtatrabaho sa Israel at sa Jordan. So just to settle all issues, minabuti ni Presidente na makipag-usap sa bayan in that format. No? So that was the only justification for it. The need for the President to be heard on these issues because he has not been heard. He was working in Jordan when this issue broke up. And also, so prior to this, kasi merong mga dating parehong format, like uh, he had a show before, uh, and also there was a there's a time when he 
he had a regular uh, Q&A with in uh, self PTV before. Do you think that ibabalik na naman ito because of these issues? Well, uh, depende po yan sa presidente ko anong gusto niyang format. No? Um, but I was very literal when I told you Monday that he wants to talk to the nation. I used those words. He wants to talk to the nation. The format does not matter. But what he did was to talk to the nation. Is it possible for him to have a regular press conference with the media? Well, if, we have regular press be, briefings. The, the president, po. Well, I think he has regular press briefings with you. It's unscheduled, but he does. Against even my own advice, no? Hmm. Thank you, sir. Okay, last question, Bernadette. Uh, sir, may papalit na po ba kay Aquino sa NFA po? Nagahanap pa po. Ah, wala pa. Okay, sir. Sir, yesterday the president said he and Aquino were having disagreements all the time. Were these dis disagreements pertain to policy decisions on whether to import rice or not? Eh, bahala na po silang dalawa. Dahil hindi naman ako nakaharap nung sila ay nag-uusap. Nakita ko sila nag-uusap nag minsan lamang. Sa Southern Leyte, hindi naman ako naghimasok because I think the president wanted privacy with him. Okay, sir. Sir, what was really the president pertaining to abolish? Is it NFAC or NFA? Literally, he said NFA council. But you cannot abolish a council without amending the law that created the NFA because the council was provided in the same law that created the NFA. So, so mukhang you could interpret it as possibly the president not wanting to completely abolish NFA because ang sabi niya dapat isa lang nagdedesisyon, no? but doing away with the council. But the pending legislation in Congress would make NFA um, a superfluous government body because the most important uh, mandate of NFA is to provide food security through importations, no? having a monopoly over the importation of uh, rice and corn. Uh, so, sir, hindi na po magda-draft ng bilang palas to abolish NFA? Hindi na po kailangan siguro dahil as a matter of course, kung matsusunod yung tarification, mawawala na yung number one na monopoly na kapangyarihan ng NFA. Okay, sir. Okay, sir, last na. Uh, the president said he wants the buffer stock to be good for six, 60 days. May particular volume po ba ng rice imports that tina, tinitignan si Presidente? So that's nearly 2 million metric tons po. You know, right now, the 4.5 million sacks is good for 48 days. So there's a mathematical computation to it. But the 4... Ano ba yung figure na sinabi ko kanina? 4. Point, ano yung sinabi ko kanina? 6. 4.6 million is good for 48 days. So, tama po ba yung 60-day buffer stock equals 2 million metric tons po? Kasi 15 days, I think, is about 400. Kasi hindi ko alam how many, how many million sacks ang metric ton eh. So, let me get the figures and tell you on Thursday. Okay, sir. Thank you po. Okay, thank you. Thank you, MPC. Thank you, Appreciate Presidential that. Spokesperson, Nari Roque. Thank you. See you on Thursday. Thank you, Malacanang Press Corps. Back to my studio sa Radio Pilipinas and People's Television Network.